Hello, Boozketeers. Tiki King here. It is Tuesday night, and you know what that means. We're coming to you live. It's Cocktails with Tiki King, and we're here tonight uh, in Las Vegas. What do you know? You never know where we're going to end up. I said we were going to be on the road, and we are. I know we find ourselves here at the Rebar, uh, which is our friend Bruce's place. He's usually here. He's not here tonight. I don't think he made it out of Oasis in time. He's probably still packing up because he's got so much stuff, I'll say. But uh, anyway, so we're here tonight and uh, enjoying some fine things. I'm having a um, I'm having the a, a, a charitable cocktail. It is the uh, let's see here. I'm having the preservation punch, which is a uh, Sailor Jerry rum, pineapple wine, simple syrup, bitters, uh, and a portion of the benefits. A portion of the proceeds benefit the uh, Nevada Preservation Foundation, which keeps old buildings from uh, getting torn down, which is a good thing because you know a lot of these places are old buildings, and if they all got torn down, there'd be uh, only new buildings. And then where would we be? Nowhere. We'd all be torn down. So when did I see you last? I saw you guys. Uh, well, I don't know. It depends on who tuned in. Which who who of you tuned into our uh, TK Oasis Madness? That was a lot of fun. We had a. Uh, we were uh, live in the atrium. We got to talk to McBiff Art, who's a very good artist and a seems like a great guy. Um, we were, we, were, uh, we had had a drink, I think, by then, and uh, just having a good time. But, uh, so yeah, to Tiki Oasis, Tiki Oasis, craziness. Um, so before that one was Trader Sam's, and uh, I showed like, the Piranha was a huge hit. It's funny that I guess, um, you know, I, I, I I thought it was just cool because it's a piranha, you know, adventure land. And the piranha's on the jungle boat, on the jungle cruise and all that. But, uh, yeah, apparently it, it's very difficult to get one. Who, who the thunk? But, uh, so yeah, so Trader Sam's, a bit loud. This is not, not a whole lot quieter tonight, but that's okay. I think you can probably hear me a little better. But, uh, so yeah, so TK Oasis was a whole lot of fun. We did a whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, saw a whole bunch of great fun people. Um, the whole thing was just a whirlwind of madness. CJ Boozketeer, CJ, he showed up there. He uh, he came on down and uh, we did it up and had a good time. And, um, apparently, we had some mutual friends there. The, our uh, friend Damien introduced us to Bunny Pistol, who is now. So I guess it all comes together. It's kind of weird. We're all we all we're all in the same weird sinking ship together, bailing it out with buckets of booze. But. Uh, what? Oh, and so, funny thing, in the last episode, this is all like going back and forth because stuff that happens. So in the last episode, I was talking about Dole Whip, right? And I was talking about how you're in, you're in Disneyland and you can go get a Dole Whip with rum. And I was talking about the different thing, Dole Whip and how the different bars. And so here's a weird thing, right? Driving through the desert, stopped in Baker. And home of the home of former home of the Bun Boy, it's gone. And uh, some of the buildings are all burned down over there, and it's kind of a big wreck. And uh, but Arn's Royal Hawaiian Hotel was uh, nicely boarded up instead of just being a, a ramshackle mess that it usually is. Uh, but but I digress because when we were stopping at Baker, we went into not Alien Fresh, but uh, the place across the street from Alien Fresh. Remember what it's called? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's a store that's famous for their, what they're famous for is they have like thousands of different kinds of soda. And I went in there because I wanted to get some Jolt Cola because it seemed like a thing that to drink while driving across the desert at high speed. Uh, but they didn't have any Jolt Cola. But guess what they had? Dole Whip. They had a whole thing, and uh, so I got a big, large Dole Whip. I didn't have any rum because I was in the car and. I couldn't reach behind my seat, so maybe next time. But I thought that was funny because, you know, talking about where you can get Dole Whip, and it turns out you can get it in Baker, which is just a hellacious place on earth with the exception of the Dole Whip, which I think redeems it in some, a little bit. It redeems it up to, I'd say, up like like 10% over. But uh, yeah, so, so here we are. So we uh, did a little research today. Um, we're going to be bringing you a couple of segments uh, in some upcoming shows uh, called Im uh, called Proper Cocktails in Improper Places. And we're going to go to desolate, just hellacious, awful, nasty places and make some really fun cocktails. And I think it'll be fun. 
Uh, but we did some research today on some places that, that could fit the bill. They were awful and desolate. And it was horrendously hot. It was 100 and, 111 in Baker, 114. It was terrible. It was, it was heat that you got. I went, what? Why? Why would you do this to us? Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I found some, found some fun places. Um, and uh, yeah, and so now here we are in Vegas. And so, like I said, the rebar, which is where we're coming to tonight, a whole hour. Wow. I don't know. What does that mean? Was, did I say I was going to do an hour, hour show, hour long? Am I going to do an hour long show? Okay. I doubt it. Um, but uh, uh, so yes, it's a rebar. So here we are. It's a it's a bar here in Las Vegas where everything is for sale. You can buy it all. If you want something, you can get like right here. I, I have my, I'm drinking all this. I can go up to the bartender and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy this. And they'll put it on my tab. I'm using. I don't know how it works. I haven't bought any. There's nothing that I particularly have to have. I'm sure there's tiki mugs around here. Like I said, Bruce is involved and he's a big tiki fanatic. So I'm sure there's there's probably tiki's around. I'd move the camera, but it would probably fall over like it did at Trader Sands. But, uh, but there's a whole boatload of uh, steins. And I'm guessing most of those came from came from Bruce because, uh, or Mr. Smiley. Some of you may know him as Mr. Smiley. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, Bruce was a, a, an avid collector of tiki mugs and steins and everything. He collected everything. He has, if there's two, he's got at least three of them. That's what that's the kind of collector he is. He used to have, um, before he moved out here to the desert, um, he used to live in this house in Oakland that uh, was famous because all the rooms were different themes and the living room was Christmas all year round. I mean, full, full on, full decorated Christmas. His personal bedroom was, uh, would Joe Sloan would have slept there. He would have been very, very, very happy in at home because it was, uh, it was sock monkey paradise. There was more sock monkeys than you, than you probably thought existed in like weird, like Siamese twins ones and like ones with abnormal, abnormalities. I don't know, it was weird. But it was good. It was good weird because Bruce is a good weird kind of guy. So he's not, like I said, not here. I was hoping he'd be here so I could say, hey, he's, he's uh, probably on the road or something. I don't know. And uh, so yeah, so when you're in Vegas, come to the rebar, have a charitable cocktail. And then give portions of the proceeds to different charities, which that made sense. I didn't know what that was. I was like, charitable cocktail. I thought maybe it was because, you know, I was being nice to my liver or something. So here you go. Here you go, poor guy. I've mistreated you. Here's something nice. There you go. Let me buy yourself something nice. Um, but uh, so another nice thing. We're only like minutes from Frankie's. We're in the hub, the hub of action here at the Rebar. Seems like a good place. And they have, uh, they have food, which is good because... Uh, uh, didn't eat a whole lot today, but uh, had some fine sausage and pretzels, and uh, it's pretty fancy because they've got look at that, a uh, champagne goblet full of cheese sauce, <laughs> which is always, you know, it's always the sign of a classy joint. If you can get your cheese sauce in a champagne goblet, you know that you've 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 done the right thing for well, the wrong thing. I don't know. I'm not going to judge you. If you do, if I, if you come to my house with a goblet of cheese sauce, I won't judge you a lot. I'll, I'll ask if you brought pretzels. That's probably the thing. But uh, the day is hot, man. This weather is seasonably unseasonable. You know one thing I didn't see? Slot machines. I'm guessing there must be some. And if there are, I'm not sure that we're supposed to be video. I guess, I guess we'll wait until someone says to stop. Or until I run out of things to say. Uh, so did, did, uh, did you read the thing that said share? If you didn't, you should. Share the program. Tell your friends. Make your friends watch it in their drunken stupor. That's always my advice. If you're, it could be, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, what do I do? Watch Cocktails of Stephen King and wake up other people, make drinks, and watch the show in the middle of the night, preferably, you know, in your underwear and a drunken stupor. That's always the best way to watch the show. Actually, I was talking to uh, Emerald Legacy, and he said, 
I'm not a TV king, you know. I watch your show in my underwear in my drunken sleep. And I figured that's Emerald, you know, bam. But uh, that's probably not true. But he, may, he might. I don't know. I don't know who watches the show. I'm always surprised. I see, I'll, I like, I'll watch later. Some, I don't even watch it. What am I talking about? I don't watch the show. I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say that. That's not true. I watch the show, but it's hard because I film it in my drunken stupor usually. So I forget that I did it until next time. And then it's too late. So, but that's, you know, that's life. That's rock and roll. That's how we do things. Here on Cocktails and Tiki King, where it could be good, you never know. Um, oh, I, I can't. I have, some, I have exciting news, but I'm, I'm gonna have to wait, let you guys dangle on that one until it gets closer to fruition. Had some uh, fun meetings with some fun people. Why am I eating more than I'm drinking? Because I started early and I drank a whole bunch before the food got here. So I'm trying to trying to get my ratios slightly askew. And because it's really good food here. They've got to, they make a pretzel dog and to fool people into thinking about that it's fancy, they give you the pretzel scraps with a goblet full of cheese sauce. And then people are like, ooh, Vegas, you know, fancy. I'd probably be drinking more, Danny, if you were here, because you would probably be buying me drinks before I could finish my old one. But I get, if I get up and get another drink, then you guys are going to be staring at the wall behind me. Like that. Which, last time I checked, well, that might be more interesting than my show. I'm not entirely certain. Who knows? Um, so, what's the, so what do you guys want to know? If you weren't at Tiki Oasis, like I said, it was, uh, it was just five days of mayhem and music and tropical drinks, and we went to some fantastic room parties. Um, oh, uh, look on uh, look on the machine here, and uh, after you don't don't do it now because you should watch the show. But after the show, go back and watch. I was interviewed by uh, Lou Jordan Lou Jordan Dobbs for Tiki Talk Show TV, and. Um, I uh, played some horrendous ukulele because I intended to play one song and played a different one. But uh, we had fun talking and uh, got some drinks and it was good. And there was, yeah, so room parties, craziness. All the people just handing out booze and you go in and there's live music. And uh, we saw some burlesque, that was a lot of fun. Uh, midnight burlesque show and um, like I said, the bands were top notch. Lee, Lee, so, so for some of you, who may have um, varied musical taste? Check out Lee Press On and the Nails. Um, great group out of San Francisco. They've been in the. It, it's funny because they're not. He even says he, he was like, "We have nothing to do with Tiki. I don't know why we're here." But they're a lot of fun. They're kind of a big band thing. Um, they're they're. I don't know what you call it. It's like it's like a big band goth music. I don't know. They have a nice. It's awesome. No, they they have. You know they. They did a, a really dark version of Pink Elephants on Parade, which was nice. Um, but they're 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 a, a lot of fun. Lee Press On and the Nails. Check them out. Tell them Tiki King sent you, uh, and uh, maybe you can get a good seat if you pay for it. Um, but uh, yeah, they were a lot of fun. Um, there, there was so many bands. How many? There was like like thirty bands over three days. It was crazy. There was more more than I can mention. Um, the Seeds. They, they played uh, on the Sunday night show. I don't know if you're familiar with that. There's a, one of their big hits was Pushing Too Hard, which Aaron, if you're watching, you remember that song? We did that in our, we, we, uh, we uh, covered that back back in the, uh, in 321. We did Pushing Too Hard. It was one of our, one of our cover songs. And so I got to see the seeds. They were, uh, you know, up there doing their thing. Um, yeah, lots of more fine music. Then you can then you can shake a stick at. And uh, tiki artists galore. Um, we uh, we uh, the, this was the first year I actually did get to go out and, and see a few people and say hello and uh, talk to some of the artists and hang out a little bit. Um, one of the best things I saw was an enameled king ukulele pin because you don't see that very often. Well, now I will because I bought the pin, but. But in general, most people who are just like you go into 7-Eleven and they've got, you know, El Cam an El Camino or you know, whatever Camaro button. I don't know what they sell 7-Eleven. I don't go there. I go to I go to AMPM. 
uh, where they usually only have the cross sword pins. Um, but yeah, King Kukulele. It's made by uh, Tiki Tony, fabulous Tiki artist. Check him out. You might, uh, you might buy something from him. Um, on the trophies, oh, so the trophies, some of you who saw the trophies, we had a great time with that. I got them all assembled and they all get handed out and people won them and they were very excited about that. Um, somewhere I'll post later a picture of uh, Miss Tiki Oasis and and, uh, and me with the, the trophy and all that. Um, there was a, there was a, a large, I bought a, I, I took with me um, the makings for, I did painkillers most of the weekend. Uh, except for Bloody Marys in the morning, but uh, but uh, I drank a handle of painkillers, and uh, then the next day I didn't know what to do. It, it, it might, my advice, that might be a bit much for a night. And uh, I told you this last time, but we're even closer, so you never know. We're going to be out in, um, well, I know I'm going to be out in Sedona giving people tattoos, whether they want them or not. So if you need a tattoo and uh, you always thought, hey, I'd love to have a tiki cane cause me pain from which I will never recover. You'll carry that physical and mental scar for the rest of your life. I'll be out there. I'll be on Sedona. You will just let me know and we'll figure it out and just stick some ink under your skin. That's good for you. That's good for me because uh, apparently uh, people bring you booze if you do that. At least that's what happened last time. And that was good. But, uh, oh, what else? So, so yeah, so I've been spending a lot of time. So, so now I'll go back to the, so, wait, where was I? I was in a lot of places. I did a lot of things. I went to a lot, I saw a house underwater. Did they tell them about that? I don't remember. I saw things, I have seen things that you people wouldn't believe. Houses underwater, barns filled with swamp, goo, and haunted deserts, and cemeteries full of all the same families weird stuff. There's things out in the desert. Yeah. Well, there's Danny. Sedona. Hmm? Yeah. You're still there. Why aren't you with us? You should go on the road with us, Danny. You could be a roadie. Why not? You could. Need any more booze, Mr. Tiki King? Why, yes, I do, roadie Danny. Thank you. Would be a tough job, but I think that you could probably do it. Oh, so yeah, so but I've been traveling a little bit, just out in the desert, looking at weird stuff, and and uh, and the thing that that uh, the thing that strikes me is where did they, where did they go? You know, you go out to these places, and that was one of the things about the the idea for the uh, well, actually, improper cocktails goes goes back a, a long ways. We did some great improper cocktails, and we didn't film it though because that was was that before cocktails? I think it came. When was that? Uh, the improper cocktails, the, the sort of birth of that. Was that? When was it? I don't know. You people have been watching. I haven't. Um, but, uh, so, so it's so. Uh, um, I can't talk about part of it because it might possibly there may be laws. Um, but at one point, we found ourselves um, in a state from which we were not sure how to uh, recover. And so I said, I said, you know what? I think that what we need to do is we need to go get a large bottle of cheap vodka and drink it out of a paper bag in a park. And that seemed to be that seemed to be possibly the cure to what was aliens. So uh, so we ambled forth and we went to a uh, oh Ralphs or something, some sort of some sort of um, a grocery store to procure a, a bottle of cheap vodka, which they, we assumed they would probably provide us with a paper bag so that we could consume it properly, because that's what the situation called for. Things were things were in a, in a state of uh, flux, and, uh, and we were, uh, and our funds were similarly so. But, uh, so we got in there, and then we saw that they had, um, they had some really good Bloody Mary mix. And we thought, well, okay, maybe we should get the vodka cheap vodka and the Bloody Mary mix and just, just you know, back and forth and just make like a gallon of Bloody Marys and we'll just go to the park and drink that. And then, we're, then we were walking through one of the aisles and they had jars of the stuff called Little Ticklers, which were, which it's a jar of toothpicks with an olive and a pickle and an onion and a pepper, I think, or something. 
And, um, and so they were like, well, there's garnish now. We, if we just got some, some celery. So we went and got, we ended up getting that and some celery and some bell peppers. And um, uh, producer Maggie just happened to have a set of glasses that she had picked up at the Dollar Tree and some toothpicks. And uh, so we ended up in a parking lot making some, or we got some ice. And we made some of the most fantastic proper Bloody Marys in a parking lot uh, overlooking the ocean down in Hunting, no, was it Manhattan Beach somewhere? What? I don't know. Somewhere. We were on our way, so thing, we're on our way to the Purple Orchid, uh, which we live stream from there. If you go back and dig, you'll find it. But um, we, were, we were waiting for the Purple Orchid, and they didn't open until later. So, yes, so we did this, but we found ourselves drinking these fun, just fantastic. Perfectly garnished, and we'll, we'll put in the comments. We'll try and maybe post a picture of the of one of them. Um, <laughs> these proper Bloody Marys in a parking lot, and I thought that would be a fun thing. Is to uh, maybe not every you know maybe every other or so well, Laguna Beach, okay? Um, but uh, maybe every now and then in an episode we'll throw in a uh, uh, proper cocktails in improper places and. And just make something uh, meticulously perfect and delicious in a place where we shouldn't be. I don't know if that's be thematic or not. I, you know, I was. We actually were looking up earlier, and maybe we'll do this one in a later episode. I don't know. We uh, we found um, through uh, some research an abandoned Nike missile base, and we were thinking about going there and uh, mixing up some B-52s because the B-52 is a fine cocktail, and it would. It would uh, it would work with the uh, Nike missile base, which is a, which is a slightly different era, but um, but still you know sort of military bomb themed, and uh, and so that would work. So like I said, it doesn't have to be thematic, but if it if it is, why not? That could that could work out. Oh, I suppose I should do some business, just a little bit. Just a little business. Um, be sure to check out the website, tikiking.com, tikiking.info, which has a bunch of stuff on it that's really good. Uh, one of the things being the Tiki King Paradise Club, where if you join, uh, it's $35 subscription, uh, but you get an introduction, an introductory welcome package of fun things that are at least worth the $35 subscription fee. But you also then get entered into a drawing to win. Uh, well, not well. Once every time we get 100 subscribers, we uh, do a drawing for a handmade Tiki King ukulele. So you could basically get a ukulele for 35 bucks. $600 value is what they say on the price tag. So, uh, and uh, don't forget the Boone's Coutures. Oh, shit, password. What should be my password? I don't know. We've, uh, we've redeemed a couple of uh, Boone's Couture buttons to people out in the wild. Who's, uh, actually, and, and one of them was uh, the guy who I did the interview for. He's a Boone's Couture. And he said, I always wanted to send for a button, but I just didn't. So. But he, uh, he uh, made up a password, I think, and I just honored it. But, uh, but I'll know for sure. I know, I know uh, when you've been bad or good. I see you when you're sleeping through the power of the internet. Um, but uh, so Blues Kateers, let's say, if you, you can either send a self-addressed stamped envelope to P.O. Box 345, send it to Tiki King, P.O. Box 345, Fulton, California, 95018, which is on the Contact Me page on my website. Or, or if you see me in the wild, you need to be able to show that you need to be able to say more than, oh, I watch your show all the time. Because people say, they go, oh, I watch your show all the time. And I'm like, well, which one's your favorite? And they go, when you did the, when you were in, in the uh, giraffes, maybe. Was that something? Did you have a, a nitrous oxide tank? And I'm like, okay, that's a later episode. Um, but uh, so, so we figured out this thing where we're going to do a password every week, and if you know the password, you just stop me in the wild and uh, and uh, give me the password. So this week's password is going to be since we're in Vegas, why don't we why don't we say it's it's Elvis? Just come up and say, "Hey, Tiki King, Elvis," with the waggling of the eyebrows, or you can just go, "Oh, oh, oh. In your best in your best Elvis Elvises Elvises. And you will get a fine boost to your button. I don't think I brought any, but that's all right. So I think that's I think that's about where we're at. I'm gonna probably because I'm gonna have to get up and get another drink, and then you guys will just be faced with the more interesting background. 
and not with me. So. I think we've done that. I think we did the business. We did the pleasure. We told you some stories. May have, uh, you know, may have, uh, uh, have uh, enlightened you to the ways, to the things to do. But what I want to say is thank you so much for tuning in every Tuesday. And um, once again, oh, that's another thing. And I keep saying this because it's true. If you have a home bar or it doesn't even have to be a home bar. That's the thing. If you have a bar near your home, because I'll have to sleep on your couch, um, that you would like me to do the show from, let me know. Send me an email, tikiking at tikiking.com, and say, hey, come to my house so that uh, I don't have to call a cab. And that works for both of us. But if you have a home bar, even better, because we can come and drink your signature drink and talk about your stuff, and I can talk about my stuff, and we can talk about stuff that we've done together if I know who you are. Why not? But uh, yeah, so do that. Tiki King at Tiki King.com. Tell me why I should come to your neighborhood and uh, make a nuisance of myself. Um, other than that, or if you just say I want to just say general things, don't forget to uh, like my Facebook page because why not? Why not like that? Oh, actually, can you like just a. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't do the social media because I don't. Because I don't know what it, how it works so much. Um. Yes, so there you go. Uh, so I've been Tiki King, and you've been the Booze Keteers, and I hope you continue to be the Booze Keteers, and make your friends the Booze Keteers, and make your family Booze Keteers, and if you have a baby and name them Booze Keteers, I will bring you a case of hands. That is my pledge to, to you. That's been, that's the reason I say that, they actually have hams on the menu here, which is going to be my next drink uh, after I say goodbye to you guys. And if you watched the, uh, the Jury Room episode, you'll know why. It's important to do that when you can. So there you go. Good night, Booze Gateers from fabulous Las Vegas. And I hope that wherever you are, you're doing what you do. And I hope that's a thing that you like to do because that's the best way to go about doing those kind of things. So good night, Booze Gateers. Pleasant dreams. And until we meet again, whether it be in Tuesdays or in jail, I hope that you all have a pleasant time of it. <laughs>